tested, but they operate on this rule of the, it's called the beer rule in Washington, D.C. Who do you want to have a beer with? J.D. Vance won that contest last night, hands down. If you saw the debate, Tim Maltz was waving his hands and red-faced and, and gesticulating and scribbling notes as quickly as he could. And J.D. Vance stood calmly. He addressed people kindly, even as the uh, political agitators pretending to be moderators were fact-checking him and not Tim Maltz. When I looked at the media response to this, there was something really fascinating. Nice works. Nice is a phenomenal thing. J.D. Vance did it so well, and we'll dig into that in some details on Friday. I want to look at the media response to this, because nice works. When I was recently traveling to California, um, I, um, I took a new approach with the Department of Homeland Security people who were working at the airport. I, I don't know what it is in my old age. Someone says it's because I wear a specific type of underwear. I, I don't want to talk about my underwear. I promise you I'm not Al Gore. Uh, who, who did like to talk about it? I, um, but I wear this and now I get, I get dinged every time I go through security in my border. And they have to check me. And I don't like that. That is not fun. So I've taken this new approach. And there was an officer approaching me in the Spokane airport. And uh, it alerted. I knew what he needed to do. And he was, he was hey, sir, you know, I need to said, oh, I saw the alert. I, I, I get it. I said, hey, you know what? You don't like this. I don't, I don't particularly enjoy it. So how about if you and I decide to not like it together? And he laughed. He said, good. I said, cool. You know, do your job. Do your job. And he did his job. And I said, hey, you know what? If you're going to do something, do it right. I appreciate your professionalism. And he said, you know, thanks. That really means a lot. It's not fun for us either. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do it. I repeated the same thing flying out of California. A completely different human being, a far busier airport, and funny thing. It worked. It simply lightened the mood. Guy checking me at that time was a lot younger, had darker skin, far busier airport in San Diego at that time of day, and it worked. His face lit up with a smile. Yeah, I don't like this either. Nice work last night for J.D. Vance. Nice and smart and calm, having his facts ready and standing next to a scribbling red face, angry looking, agitated Tim Waltz, who was obviously lying and obviously trying to get the moderators to do even more to attack J.D. Vance. It was even CNN, CNN said last night that J.D. Vance may be too good in the debate stage for Tim Waltz, but everyone roots for the Labrador and not the coyote. He was here in the hired basically as Donald Trump's designated hitter. Donald Trump is a casting director, and he was convinced that he would be good on TV for him. And this debate is obviously the most important television appearance uh, there is. And, you know, he comes in. We all know, having worked with Van Jones, how these Yale-educated lawyers <laughs> very slick. Uh, easy, easy. You're going to get trigger walls. You know, he hates that game. But, uh, but uh, you know, they have very different personalities. Uh, you know, Vance is, you know, he is a bit predatory on that debate platform. And Waltz, you know, his strength is, is his warmth and his, his everydayness. It's kind of like a Labrador versus a coyote. And uh, the question is, people root for the Labrador, but can he get enough swipes in to keep the coyote off? So that's CNN talking about nice. But it was Tim Waltz who's supposed to be nice in their eyes. That's not what happened. And the rest of the media caught on to this, and it wasn't always to the pleasure. You would think it would be a happy thing that J.D. Vance was nice on the debate stage. Joy Reid argued that Waltz was awkward but relatable and won the debate because of it. But he said, number one, nothing memorable. There's nothing clippable yeah, in what he said. They were just all smooth, bland lies. He got outdone by JD, uh, by Tim Walls, who may be awkward. 
He may got, he took him a while to get warmed up, but he won the debate because he actually had substance. He was relatable and he didn't go in there to slay wow. J.D. Vance. He went in there to show himself and he showed himself to be bipartisan. He showed wow. himself to be reasonable. Practical. He showed himself to be practical. He acted as a governor. He And a lot of people are complaining that he didn't knock J.D. Vance out and that he wasn't rhetorically cruel. But that was not his job. It was obvious that his job was to sell Kamala Harris as president. He did that very well. He won the debate. Wrote... Wow. Wait, so MSNBC didn't see it. How could this be? The body language, the red face, the distorted looks, the hand waving, the ranting. Here's why. The brand must win. The brand is nice uncle. Nice uncles do not let babies that survive abortions die on metal tables. That's not what nice uncles do. This nice uncle empowered that. To watch an event that most of us in this network have seen and you've heard all morning long of Tim Waltz saying, it's not true. That's not how the bill's written. And J.D. Vitt saying in a very kind way, what, what exactly did I get wrong, Governor? Well, it's just not true, but what exactly is wrong? Or J.D. Vance continuing to insist, or probably Tim Waltz continuing to exist, that, that Kamala Harris will be tough on the border. And all J.D. Vance had to say was, but why isn't she tough on the border? And he said it in a kind way. So that was Joy Reid. I wonder what Simone Sanders thinks. MSNBC Simone Sanders was mad that Tim Waltz was too nice on the debate stage. There were so many niceties on that debate stage tonight. I am just kind of like, well, if you agree so much with J.D. Vance, why should they vote for you? Mm. I fully believe that Governor Waltz went out there tonight and did what was practiced in debate prep did what the strategy was that the, that the team put together. That was not the Governor Walls that we, that I had seen out on the campaign trail. No, the Governor Walls on the campaign trail, Tim Waltz on the campaign trail, is a screamer and a yeller. This guy, well, he didn't scream, but he screeched. He gesticulated, he hyperventilated, but they cannot see it. What did the American people see? I think they see networks anymore that are simply ways to amplify emotion. In the analysis, there's no particular fact analysis. Well, here's one. The inflation created by Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and the policies, you know what that welcomed? The longshoremen shut down. How? Because it creates massive, massive pressure on the Americans' abilities to buy what they need, price pressure. It created the perfect timing for the longshoremen to strike, to put our nation at risk. I'm not blaming the people who work on the docks. You deserve a contract for honest work. Honest day's work, honest day's wage. What I'm looking at is a union boss who says he's going to do something to us. That's a fact driven by inflation. It makes the timing perfect for this. Here's another one. As they were doing the debate, the storm did come up. J.D. Vance did bring it up. He did recognize the human tragedy. And, and, Tim Waltz nodded along with J.D. Vance. But there's no mention of the institutional capture of FEMA. Maybe Nicole Wallace saw something of note in the debate. Well, I'll let you decide. Nicole Wallace argues women wouldn't like J.D. Vance's mansplaining calling back to the I'm speaking debate moment for Kamala Harris. 
Yeah. And I actually yeah. think if you're a woman, that might be the, the worst moment J.D. Vance had because he was going to mansplain right over that mute button. Um, he was, uh, and again, I don't pretend to know how everyone will react to this. I think that a lot of women um, in positions of authority that should command respect just by virtue of that dynamic will see themselves, and some do, the disrespect of them and talked over. Uh, you know, I, I mean, there was a moment like that with, with the vice presidential in the Harris-Pence uh, debate. In the Harris-Pence debates, Kamala Harris had rehearsed time and time again, uh, Governor, uh, Governor, uh, 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 Vice President, I, I, I'm speaking, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm speaking, I'm speaking, I'm speaking, I, I'm speaking. She didn't get to do that with President Trump, of course, so what was it that J.D. Vance was mansplaining? He was stating the fact that Tim Waltz signed into law a bill that allows the hiding of any records as to how doctors deal with babies who survive an abortion. Why would you not want records of that? This is a human life. You could argue that it has to do with the safety of the mother. Why would you not want records kept? Because records indicate what people did or didn't do. Since he signed that into law, it has had the effect of people being able, doctors being able to refuse to care for babies to survive abortions. And since that time, eight little babies have died from exposure or cold or malnutrition. That's what he was pushing back on being fact-checked, and Nicole's point about this is that it was women who were doing it. Only women have that ability to speak towards abortion, period, by virtue, and she said it, by virtue of who they are. J.D. Vance is a father. J.D. Vance is a product of having not been aborted. J.D. Vance used to be an embryo, and then an infant. J.D. Vance is running to be vice president of the United States. This is a national policy. Of course he gets to comment on it. But he's supposed to sit down when the boss ladies speak. That's the dynamic they put on stage, isn't it? Wasn't that part of the CBS plan? On CNN, Scott Jennings, the sole conservative these days on CNN, it seems, said that J.D. Vance was the clear winner of the debate, calling Waltz's performance a meltdown. It's pretty clear uh, Vance outclass walls did this guy sitting in the white house situation room with that facial expression that's like 50 percent sheer terror and 50 percent extreme bafflement i mean it was amazing the split screen difference between a competent vance and a totally in over his head walls the answer on why he lied about his trips to china and the tiananmen square thing was probably the worst vp debate meltdown since stockdale in 92 you know who am i and why am i here it was Two and a half minutes of absolute terrible. For Vance, night of redemption, all the political media has told us that Vance was a terrible pick and Walls was going to bring in all these voters. That charade is now over. Walls does not belong at this level of American politics. Vance does. Final verdict, Tim Walls wandered into the wrong part of me. <laughs> That's a heck of a way to put it. Maybe I'm the one who's just propping up my own bias. Maybe. God has gifted all of us with something. I don't know why he chose me for this, but one of the skills you pick up in corporate America over the years is reading body language, particularly when you present and sell and go into chief executive offices for a living, boardrooms, you pick up on body language. Here's where Tim Waltz was at body language wise. As Skinner said, scared, but something else naked he felt naked because for the first time in a long time he was going to stand back and buy a man his intellectual better his moral better who would have just as much time to confront his lies as he had to tell them 
Walt's understood perfectly that he can't shift the facts to comport to his lies. So he'd have to continue to scramble the lies he's spoken in order to try to comport them into something that seems like facts. And the Tiananmen Square thing was the perfect example of that. But there was one other thing. Remember that beer rule? 